Hi, and welcome to our second week of the study of First John. My name is Amy Mielbauer, and if you would like and you haven't watched them already, I would really encourage you to go back and actually watch the first week of videos. You can catch those on Facebook or YouTube. And while you're there, we as a whole team would really love to see you interact with those videos. If God is speaking to you or something is uh, catching your attention in one of those, let us know, comment, uh, like it, uh, share it with your friends even, or your family. We would just really love to know how God is working through these little devotion videos. So the major themes of First John are obedience, love, and truth. Now, last week we tackled quite a lot on obedience and a good bit on love. And today I'm going to start talking about truth or true doctrine but before we dive into the scripture, let's pray. God, thank you so much for giving us your holy word. I pray that you would speak to us through it today and that your spirit would let us learn what it is you have for us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right. My chunk today is 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 to 29. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you, that what you heard from the beginning abides in you, uh, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you uh, about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who pra practices righteousness has been born of him. Okay, so some observations that I made on this passage is that it first starts by talking about the last hour. And so what is that? What does that mean? Well, this is the period between Jesus's death and resurrection and his second coming or the final judgment. And we can read about this in more detail in Matthew 24. In Jesus's own words, he talks about this period and he gives some signs and descriptions of the end of the age. That's what he calls it uh, in Matthew 24. And some of those signs are wars, famines, earthquakes, false prophets. It sounds a little bit like what's going on here. And Jesus actually compares it to childbirth. Now, as someone who's gone through childbirth three times, I can tell you it's not a very fun process. Um, you thought it was bad when it began, and then it just gets worse. And right when you think you're about to die, uh, this beautiful, perfect miracle comes into the world and makes it all worth it. And that is, that's the picture that Jesus gives us about um, this 
this last hour or the, the end of the age is that it's going to get progressively and progressively worse. But don't worry, there's a reward at the end. And so, um, so Jesus' second coming will make it all totally worth the suffering. Now, this word antichrist comes up a lot in this passage, and that can sound really ominous. And basically, that just means anyone who denies that Jesus is the Christ, right? It says that right here in verses 22 and 23, that people are denying that Jesus was the Son of God, and so they're denying God altogether. And these people are actually doing the devil's bidding. That's a really scary thought, because these are people that that they thought were Christians. They were part of their fellowship. But we learn that clearly God's, God's truth did not take root in their heart. It was not fully planted and hadn't, hadn't really absorbed into their hearts. So it's really important for us to be submitted to the Holy Spirit, to fully commit to his will and to pursuing the, uh, the work that he wants to be doing in us. And we can learn more about this in John's gospel. So we're in John's letter to some churches, but he actually wrote a gospel all about the life of Jesus. And in John's gospel, in chapter 14, he actually describes uh, this Holy Spirit that, that God sent. And in verses, in chapter 14 of John, verses 25 and 26, it says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. This is Jesus, remember. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So this sounds like a great step up, right? The Holy Spirit's job is to help us and teach us and to give us counsel and convict us when we're wrong. In my study this week for this devotional, I found an old Latin saying, and it says, the line which shows itself to be straight shows also what line is crooked. I'm going to read that again just to let it sink in a little bit. The line which shows itself to be straight shows also what line is crooked. This, this little adage blew my mind this week because it's saying the thing that, uh, that we know is true, the line which we know is straight, it shows everything else that is straight, but it also really points out when things are not straight because it doesn't match up. And so that's what God's word is. God's word is our plumb line. It's the thing by which we measure everything else. And so we need to get to know it. That's the thing that I'm taking out of this passage of 1 John, is that for us to know what the truth is, we need to get to know God's word. And we need to get to know Christ a lot better because this actually will safeguard you against being led astray by false teachers, by those antichrists. Now, the world is hungry for truth. And here it is in a nutshell, you guys. There is a God who loves you. He sent his son, Jesus, to show us what he is like and to die to forgive us of all of the things that we have done wrong so that we could have a right relationship with God. And if we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, he actually sends his spirit to live within us to be our counselor and our helper. That's it. That's the truth. Now, this spirit that God sends to live within us First John actually says that it anoints us. That means it, it covers us. It completely saturates us. And that's exciting. And actually in the Gospel of John, just a page uh, forward from where we were in chapter 14, in John 15, 5, 
Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So Jesus is also saying that we need to, to stay with him, to abide with him. And when we have this anointing of the Holy Spirit that we've stayed with, we actually have the ability to discern the truth. Now, it's not saying that we no longer need those teachers and pastors and leaders to, uh, to help us. It's just saying that if you are in tune with God's word and with his spirit, you already know the truth because the truth lives inside of you with his spirit. Now, the recurring theme that I see is that we need to get to know Christ. We need to get to know him better so that we know his will and we can distinguish between what is true and what is falsehood. How do we do that? Well, we need to get into the scripture. We need to read the Bible. Just read it. Also, we need to start memorizing it because when we memorize it, it actually takes root deeper in our hearts than just reading it. We actually commit it to memory and to our hearts and it's embedded in us and it starts to change our heart. We also need to be perceptive and open to that Holy Spirit that lives inside of us if we've asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. We need to be in tune with him and uh, more perceptive. We also need to develop a rhythm of constant prayer and communication with God. Because that's how we communicate with him. We pray, we read his scripture, and we listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting. Now, there is a really fun verse in Jeremiah 31, verses 33 to 34. It says... For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So what, what God is saying here is that when you have the Holy Spirit, you don't need to rely on what other people say about him. You don't need to rely on what other people's experiences of God because you actually can experience God for yourself with an intimate relationship. So the thought that I want to leave you with today is how will you pursue that intimate relationship with God? Maybe you need to amp up your Bible reading and actually dig into scripture for yourself. Maybe you need to start memorizing those scriptures and actually letting them take root in your heart. Maybe it's just developing a better rhythm of prayer that you just kind of pray at meals or before bed and you need to make it sort of just a constant part of your day. But really in the end, we need to abide in his spirit. We need to be in tune with that spirit that has anointed us. And that's how we're going to get to know Christ better. Is by living in his word and in his spirit. So I hope that you can think on that and pray on that today and take some steps to get to know Christ better. Thanks for watching.